Okay, this video is to show you how to do a build in place um, chain. Um, there will be later assignments where we're doing a specific object, but we're going to start off by making one of these links. So I'm going to start from scratch. So we'll open a new project. And I've got a, I've got a diagram here of the basic sketch and I'll refer to it. Uh, from time to time. So right now we're going to start off with this dimension. So it's 12.5 uh, millimeters from point to point. So we're going to start a sketch and we're going to I guess we'll start with a line. So we're going to go 12.5 millimeters and we're going to put a circle at each end. So uh, the innermost circle is 3.5 millimeters. So we'll do that on both ends of this. 3.5 millimeters. And uh, same on the side. Five millimeters. This construction line can be um, a. This line can be a construction line. So I'm going to basically show you how to do that by toggling. You select the line so it turns deep blue and then you toggle this on and off. You can also use the X on the keyboard as a shortcut. The next is a 4.5 millimeter circle and then it's going to be followed by a 6. So 4.5 and 6. So we're going to try to keep to six millimeters a lot. And so on this side we've got a six. So it says radius of three. So that's going to be a diameter of six. There's probably a quicker way of doing this. So from there, we've got a tangent line that goes the full distance. So we'll put that in. So for that one, we're going to misdraw it. So if you have that situation where you want to put a constraint, so this is a tangent. So we click on the line in the circle, and then we click on the line in the circle, and that worked out. So you can see that it turns black. Uh, now we can do the same thing on the bottom or we can mirror it. So we want to select the object that we want to mirror, so it's this line. And then we want to select our mirror line as, as it happens we have one already. So now we've got a line on the bottom. And you can sort of see that it's always, it's fully contained so it turns a light blue. So we've done all of the circles on the front, we've done all the circles on the back. So this next circle right here has got a distance of 5.5 uh, millimeters and then it's a six it's a six millimeter circle so if I draw the circle on this line and then I can go up here and I type in six so I can take my dimension tool and I can click the center of the circle and I think it was there and then I type in 5.5. It will shift it along that line and anchor it there. So I'm gonna just verify I did that correctly. So it goes from the center of the circle in the back and then that is going to be our arc here. So, and then it's trimmed. So we can grab our modify tool and we can trim that. Okay, so this is getting confusing, but hopefully you can follow along. So then the last thing we have to do is create this uh, arc here. And this arc is, the center of this arc is right here. Um, so that's gonna be the outer edge, which would be 3.5 millimeters from the center. So let's put that in. So. right here and then we can go to six and it worked out even okay that didn't work for some reason 
Okay, so now we got a whole bunch of lines. So I forgot to trim this line and this line. And the same on the bottom. If you hit escape to get out of your tool, you can move some of these arrows. You can even delete them. It doesn't actually do anything. So let's just verify that we've got the right idea so far. So we've got the back end done correctly. We've finally trimmed that second half of the circle. We have this centered in on that line. This one is centered 5.5 millimeters from the back circle. And so we just need these little arcs. These arcs are not super important. So if you don't get them the exact right size, that's not, not terribly important. So I'm using the arc tool. So I click on here and then I click on here and I'm just trying to figure out what's right. Not happy with that, so I'm gonna try it again. So arc three point. There's probably a better way of doing this, and that's pretty happy with that. So I could trim that line, and that'll become clear what that is. So we're gonna mirror that to the other side. We want to select our center line, and then click OK, and then we just have to trim. So that's our entire sketch. So let's just verify. So we've got one circle in the back that's 3.5, a six mil in the back, six on the front. We've basically got three circles inside and then we've got two uh, semicircles or arcs there. So I think that's good. So I'm gonna hit finish. So if we go back to our picture of what's happening, you can sort of see that there is a thickness across and you can always measure that. It's not gonna be exactly because there's a fillet here, but that is 7.5 um, millimeters. So it's, it's most likely eight millimeters. So we're going to grab the extrude and we're going to click on, Let's do this part. So we know that this part's gonna be eight millimeters. We wanna change this to symmetrical. And so if it's gonna be eight millimeters in total, it's gonna to be four in each direction. So I can type in four. Now you'll notice that my sketch has gone away. So I have to open up sketches and I have to bring it back. Now this center part is gonna be slightly under um, half. So we're going to extrude that. So we're gonna click on this part. Uh, we're gonna grab everything. So this is our air gap and this basically defines how this is going to move. So this outside circle is six. This inside circle is 4.5. And so I'm gonna change that to both directions and we're gonna move it out. And we could change our view to the top so we can sort of see what's going on and it's gonna be slightly uh, smaller than the back part of this. So I think that the measurement I used was uh, 1.45. So as long as we remember that. So then we've got that part done. So the only part we have to do is this back thing and then the peg that goes through it. So it's hard to select that uh, part so we actually want to select all of this part right here. So one of the ways of doing that is by turning off the body and then we hit extrude and we select this part. I'm going to leave that circle out just for now. And um, I'm going to go to symmetrical and I'm going to pull this out. So the last one was uh, 145, so let's go 155. And we're gonna force a cut. Now it's giving me an error because there's no body, so I'm gonna turn the body back on. And it's hard to see, but that's what we're gonna end up with. So we hit escape, we click okay. And if we look from different sides, sort of see the general shape of it. 
And we just have one more thing to do, and that's this uh, this little peg that's going to go in the back and interlock. So I'm going to hit extrude. I'm going to grab that circle. I'm going to select both ways, or symmetrical. And then I'm going to give it a direction. But I'm going to go instead of a distance, instead of a distance, I want to select an object, but it's not letting me. So maybe we're going to have to go with the distance. Now, we know that it's eight in total, so four will get the distance, and we want to have it join. So we click OK, and now we have to turn our sketch off because we turned it on. So that is essentially our part. And at this point, we should probably save it. You can click Escape and Home. Save it. I'm going to call this uh, single link. And I think it's my version 5. I've been messing around with this a little bit. Okay, so now the only thing we have to do is to make two of them. So what's the best way to, to have them link together? So what I've found is that if I make open up the bodies and I make a component, so create component, that's a left or right click, right click. Sorry, I'll do that again. Um, well, I guess it, it did it. Um, and so now we've got essentially this object and I can triple click on this and I can go uh, link one. Okay, so now I've got the object that I wanna copy. I can do a right click on this and I can copy it. And then here's the important part is going up here and you want to paste uh, new. So the interesting thing is that it overlays it. So we're just going to grab it and we're going to move it. And if you remember the spacing, it was 12.5 between the two centers. And that's what we're hitting for a target. So then if we click OK, then we should have the basis for a link. Now if you do a right click on here to opacity, you can change that to like 30% and then you can orbit around and you can see that, that that's what's happening is that you have a solid pin going through the front part and then everything else is a little bit smaller. I can go and change the opacity back up. So I'll go back up to 100 and you can sort of see that there's an air gap anywhere. So when you print that out, you're going to have uh, two links that work. If you wanted to continue on the pattern, you could uh, you could keep going. Just keep um, cutting and pasting, or paste new, and you can bring that. Now this one's going to be, instead of 12.5, it's gonna be 25. Um, and you can capture the position. And if you wanted to keep going, you could keep going. So paste new, and then you could go back. So negative 12.5 would be uh, also a possibility. I'm going to have to type it in just because it's trying to click. And so that's how we make our link. You could see in the beginning I had them colored. So you could do a right click, hit escape a few times, do appearance, and you can start dropping colors on the bodies just for fun. And I think the other one was yellow. Okay, so good luck with that assignment. The, the reason this is important is that you get your, your rod and your um, holes properly sized before you start making a larger item and that way you don't print a whole bunch and just make a mistake. Okay, good luck with that.